The SIR model is a simple model for looking at epidemic spread of an infection across a population. It's termed SIR, SIR because, well, it has, it's a three-state dynamical system. The susceptible population, the infected population, and the recovered population. And as the arrows suggest in this dynamical system, the state's transition from susceptible to infected, once someone becomes infected with the disease, and then after some period of time, an infected person will transition to the recovered state. And that's what this arrow represents. And so this is a three-state dynamical system. It's not linear. It's actually nonlinear. But let's think about how we would go about modeling this, 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 basic, um, this basic system. Well, because it's a three-state system, we have to write our three differential equations. We're going to have one for S, one for I, and one for R. We'll start out with the transition from I to R, simply because that's e much a much easier idea to understand than the S to I transition. The, the number of people from I that transition to R will be proportional to how many people are in that current state. And so if we were to write out the equation for the number of people recovering, number recovering, that would look like something where there's a constant parameter, some proportionality constant, times i, the number of people right in the infected population. It's worth noting that in this model, there's no births or deaths, right? The population stays static. That means if n represents the total number of people in the population, that's equal to s plus i plus r, right? So this is number people. And so the number of people that recover in any given time for any given time step is given by gamma times i. What that means is that for any instantaneous time, the change in i is going to be influenced and going to decrease by this amount, right? Because that represents the number of people that are leaving i and going into r. So this is going to be minus gamma i. I think I'm going to put this a little further over to give us more room minus gamma i. And similarly, if people are exiting i, if the rate of change, if i is losing people by gamma i amount, then r must gain the same amount of people in order for this equation to hold true for the number of people in the state of the system across the states to be conserved. That means the rate of change of R must be adding gamma I. And we'll just leave it here to keep it symmetrical. So, right, gamma I people leave I and enter R. So minus that plus this. That's the change that's represented as people recover from the infection. Now, let's look at this transition here. The number of people that go from susceptible to infected. Well, this depends not on a single variable. Unlike the situation here, where the number of people transitioning out of I into R is only dependent on one variable, the I, the, the number of people in I, 
This is a first order um, parameter, right? A first order kinetic term. And if you if you have modeled any differential equations for um, for molecules, right? This would be the reaction uh, the reaction rate where you only have one molecule depending on the rate of the reaction. But that is not the case here, right? To go from a susceptible person to an infected person, you have two things that are interacting. You have to have an infected person bumping into, right? A susceptible person transmitting that disease from the susceptible to the, from the infected to the susceptible. That we're going to say is the number of people that are acquiring the disease. So number newly infected and we're going to write that as a parameter. It's going to be some proportional constant as always, right? So there's going to be some scaling factor. We're going to label that as beta and that's just historical reasons. That's what it's called. And then we're going to recognize that this is a function of the population of susceptible people and infected people. The more susceptible people or the more infected people there are, the higher the, num the number of new infections that will occur. So this is just a second order interaction term, right? Where you multiply these two states together. And this represents that interaction. Now, if you're, per if you're keeping an eye on the dimensions here, right? These rates of changes are all in people because we have S plus I plus R, right? These are just number of people that change, leaving or exiting. If this number is positive, people are joining the susceptible state. If this number is negative, people are leaving the susceptible state. Same with I and R. If this is positive, then new, the infected group is getting larger. And if this is negative, then the infected population is getting smaller. But if you look at these dimensions here, right? Beta is just a constant, it has no dimensions. S is in number of people and I is in number of people. So this expression is in people squared. And that is not the units of these equations. So in order to make this make sense, we have to divide this term by N. Because if you perform the dimensional analysis here, you get people times people, people squared divided by people, and now you're back to people. So that's why this expression is beta SI over N. And so if this is the newly infected, if this is the term for the newly infected people, guess what? The I population, the I state is going to grow by that amount. So we're gonna put that over here and say beta S I over N. Similarly, if I is growing by that amount, then guess what? The susceptible population must fall by that equally same amount. And this negative term is the, describes the rate of change for S. That's it. This is the model. This represents how a, a single index case individual, right, where, in, where the number of people in I is one initially, when, and everyone else, right, N minus one, because there's zero recovered people in that case, and N minus one people are susceptible how an infection will spread through that population to go from susceptible to infected to recovered. That's the basics of the SIR model.